Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to do another winter 2023-2024 look ahead. We are only three and a half weeks away now from reaching meteorological winter so it really is crunch time for these longer term forecasts because in about a week or two's time There'll be sort of four weeks, six week ahead uh, models that we'll be able to start uh, have a look, having a look at that will give us a very good indication of what December does have in store. Now, in today's video, we are only going to have a look at the latest ECMWF data as so that comes out on the first of the month. Unfortunately, the rest of the models we look at on Copernicus comes out on the 10th of the month, so coming out later this week. So we'll probably have a look at that in next week's video. But some of this ECMWF data today is extremely interesting. And as I said, this is brand new data going for the winter period we'll be having a look at the mean sea level pressure anomalies here for the uh for the seasons upcoming or for the three month periods coming up for december january february uh, and stretching all the way into, uh, all the way out until april may time and we'll also be having a look at probably the most interesting part of this video is to do with the stratosphere the 10 hpa temperatures and of course their zonal mean winds up at 10 hpa as that can have a massive knock-on effect and can completely distort all long-term um mean sea level pressure anomalies and other climate drivers if we did see something like a sudden stratospheric warming that does happen on average every two or three years so it is a relatively common occurrence but it always does have a quite a big buzz when there is the risk and today this latest ECMWF update is definitely showing at least a weakening polar vortex into December and even a few members of the ensemble are showing a ridiculously early season stratospheric warming so very interesting seeing that and we'll run through that in this video so to remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the links in description now if you start on the mean sea level pressure anomalies these go out for the next three months so this is the december january and february seasonal forecast essentially showing what sort of anomaly pressure patterns we're going to be seeing so blue would indicate slightly lower than average pressure and reds would be sim uh, oranges, yellows and reds would be symbolic of slightly above average pressure. You can see the signal here, the darkest blue is only 4 HPA below average, the darkest red is only 4 HPA above average. So it is relatively weak ensemble members, uh, sorry, weak anomaly as it is coming out over a three month period. But this could and hopefully does give a reasonable estimate of what the rough pressure anomalies will be over the next three months. Now you can see here, if we look at the UK, we've got big area of blue over the top of us. Now, if this blue was stretching further westwards, we'd be more inclined to say a very strong westerly wind. But this blue is extending further eastwards with a little bit of yellow towards uh, southern Greenland. Now, some would look at this and suggest perhaps a northerly tracking jet stream over Greenland plunging southwards, meaning the UK is on the back of more northerly or easterly winds. But for that sort of scenario to be possible, we'd probably be having to look at a much more positive pressure anomaly towards Greenland and northeast Canada up towards Iceland. Now, we're not seeing that for this three monthly period. Now, there's two kind of options there. Um, that it is very transient, we are going to see colder and milder spells, uh, giving this overall anomaly pattern. Or the second option is that it could be a winter of two halves or a winter of multiple distinct periods that we have seen. Like we saw last winter, we saw multiple very cold periods. In December, we saw a very cold period. In the first two weeks, we saw another week-long very cold period in January. We saw some very cold weather in March as well, with snow quite widely in that February, uh, in that March um cold snap now if we look back at those anomalies you'll be able to see that it would have a similar chart to this where the overall winter is nothing spectacular this chart is not spectacular at all but embedded within it was very mild stormy spells but increase in very cold spells as i said if this was dominant blues towards the north atlantic extended towards the uk i would say most likely looking very westerly based but the inkling here from what we've seen so far in the winter updates and what we'll see in a minute as we run through some of the other, uh, or as we progress through this forecast, it could be a bit of a front-loaded winter in terms of mild, uh, mild and wet and windy weather, perhaps 
post New Year, which a lot of the early updates we did could favour some cold weather. Now, if we move to the January periods, this is showing January, February, March. Look at the difference. Look at Greenland. These huge areas of greens extending over most of the Arctic. Now, this would be very much symbolic of much cold weather. We'd be looking at this and thinking very cold northerly and easterly winds are looking likely. Yes, the jet stream could break through, but most likely would break through in southerly tracking patterns, potentially giving some big snow events, maybe more marginal further southwards but would provide extremely interesting January, February, March if this did come off. So it is looking more than likely that the chart we just looked at, it's December that's got a very negative North Atlantic anomaly for pressure, and it's as we get to the new year, this positive anomaly does come as well. Now we can progress to February, March and April, so to the back end of winter, again we've got some quite big northern blocking. The blues do extend no further out to the Atlantic, so that could encourage a bit of a battleground with northerly and easterly winds and southwesterly winds. It's a sort of pattern that we have seen quite often in the UK, where we see the major blocking, but it's more of a west-based NAO, um, which would even though look amazing on synoptics for cold weather at the surface would be tantalizing close uh, tantalizing close to cold weather but we would miss out an example that comes to mind is december 2021 where we for about a week to two weeks leading up to the christmas period thought it was going to be very cold and very snowy and in the bat of an eyelid we saw it trend to much milder, wetter and windy conditions. And the reason for that was not that the blocking disappeared that was going to give the cold weather, but the blocking slowly drifted further westwards, allowing a southwesterly wind to fight its way in. And essentially, the very cold air that we thought was going to hit our shores stayed about 50 miles offshore out in the North Sea in the end. So that's the sort of pattern that we could see here, but it could be another situation where it's that January, February point that's got this big positive anomaly over Greenland. And as we head into spring, we see this negative anomaly. And as, as we progress into March, April, May to the end of this run, we're still seeing some quite blocked weather towards the Northern Hemisphere. Very interesting indeed. We have, I must admit, seen charts like this in prior years, and then nothing happens. Uh, the blocking never really takes off, or it shows in the models, but never really comes to fruition. But there definitely is a, de a big positive anomaly for pressure here as we head into the new year, into the second half of winter. So very, very interesting seeing that. I'll be, I'll be very intrigued to see what the models next week have to show from Copernicus, whether they do follow a very similar trend. Because on Copernicus, we can look at month-by-month month basis. And it'll be interesting to see if December is a month where it's very Wesley-based, and then it flips. That was what some of the runs were showing in the past few updates. And we'll have to see if it does continue. Now, if we do go have a look at the 10 HPA temperatures, this is all to do with the stratosphere and the zonal mean winds at 10 HPA. Now, these are the weekly ahead charts. They go out to about the middle of December, and these are the sort of charts we'll have a look at for all sort of parameters in a couple of weeks' time. But there's no really point looking at them at this stage, as they only extend about a week or two into December for the pressure patterns at the surface. And the pressure patterns at the surface are normally a lot more uncertain than we see up in the stratosphere. The stratosphere is generally more predictable at that 10 to 30 day range only you know a bit more predictable we know we can't exactly say what's going to happen but there's a much less deviation than we normally see with the pressure patterns now if we do have a look this is this uh week uh, upcoming week next uh mondays and you can see there's no real positive or negative anomaly some slight reds over the uh the uh, North Pole and some slight blues. If you haven't seen these charts before, bl uh, blue would indicate colder than average temperatures, red would indicate above average temperatures. If we're seeing a sudden stratospheric warming, we'd be seeing some dark reds or even blacks appearing here. We saw a very strong polar vortex, meaning more westerly winds, then we'd be looking at some darker blues. I've got plenty of videos, especially uh, previous in these winter updates and over the past couple of years, if you are more interested in looking in depth at this. But we'll run through this relatively quickly, as most of you do know what's going on with this chart. Let's get to the next week.
Look what happens out towards Siberia and Alaska. We see a darker red pattern appearing. Not penetrating into the North Pole yet. And you can see the polar vortex here with these dark black lines showing the lower pressure over the North, uh, the North Pole. It's getting distorted, but it's still roughly over the North Pole there. You can see where the 90 degree North, uh, north um, sign is. The week after that, as we extend into December, that positive anomaly strengthens still we're not seeing any major changes to the drops uh, to the polar vortex here the stratospheric polar vortex but we are seeing a bit of a high pressure system start to develop out here towards alaska the following week into the first full week of december we start to see those darker reds penetrate into the arctic suggesting that we could see a big weakening of the polar vortex not guaranteed a sudden stratospheric warming that would require a reversal of the zonal wind winds and a potentially even a split of the polar vortex something that we wouldn't be able to predict or have a look at until maybe only a week or two out but regardless this is tentative science that that is a real possibility if this pattern continued beyond that the darker reds penetrate further into the arctic and look where this low pressure system is now this is the center of the polar vortex it's at least been displaced now off the north pole and this is right at the end of the run with darker reds dominating over the northern hemisphere incredibly interesting seeing this today again would very much suggest a weaker than average polar vortex as we head into december and in turn that could strengthen the possibilities of more blocking into the new year because of course it has about a two to four week downwelling effect whenever we see these changes up in the polar vortex so if we see a very strong polar vortex in december it will likely lead to a fairly strong jet stream in january not always but more often than not the same as if we saw a really weak polar vortex in December. You know, a couple of weeks later, it's more than likely going to have a bit of blocking propagating through the atmosphere. Now, finally, if we have a look at the same sort of data, but this is the anomalies in their sort of pure form, in line graph form. Now, what we saw previously was all those anomalies put on top of each other to give sort of an overall spread an ensemble mean. Now, here is each of the runs just plotted out with no deviations uh, no additions to it, no collating or accumulating it together, just each of the individual runs all put out together. Now you see this dark blue line, that is the ensemble mean, so the average of the ensembles here. The thicker red line is the average, sort of the climatolog climatological average, what we'd expect really. But you see at the moment we're actually got a fairly strong polar vortex, um, really quite high, about 10 meters per second uh, faster than it should be really this time of year. But watch, well, look what happens as we head into early December. It starts to actually drop. It should be strengthening. You can see the darker red line continues strengthening throughout November into December. But the darker blue line here weakens into December and actually drops quite a bit below average as we head into the first couple of weeks of December. Now, I must say, there are some big positive anomaly runs still appearing. But there are more than that going for below average. And some, a minority, I must say, a very small minority going for a reversal, i.e. below zero. Maybe if we're lucky, around five or six go for reversal, uh, and that would produce a sudden stratospheric warming. Now, sudden stratospheric warmings are very difficult to occur in December, because that is when the polar vortex should be at its peak strength. So it is even harder to distort. But it cannot be ruled out. We have seen sudden stratospheric warmings around the new year point before. This would be ridiculously early if we saw it in mid-December. But even if it didn't have a full reversal, if we didn't see a sudden stratospheric warming, we just saw a simple weakening in December, it could put blocking more into the picture as we head into the new year. So it is very difficult to have a look at these runs as we are trying to have a put a picture together of what winter could have in store but if you kind of sum up what i've seen from these charts it would suggest that it will have a relatively westerly based december not guaranteed that it will be completely westerly based but probably overall will be good after colder snaps but mostly westerly based and then as we head into the new year the combination of the long-term pressure anomalies at this stage potentially even the stratosphere coming into play weakening of the polar vortex could very much put blocking on the cards as we head into 2024
We have to continue to have a look at this. Again, I must emphasize this is not concrete data. This is not a definitive answer of what is going to happen through December, January and February. This is just a way to having a better idea than having a better idea than just guessing, really. Um, things can change, but as I have stated last year, we were roughly correct with what we said, which was an early December cold snap for more of a westerly base in the new year. That did roughly happen. We did see cold weather in December. We did actually see colder snaps as we head into the new year, and we eventually saw a sudden stratospheric warming in February and March, into March. So we were roughly correct with what happened last year, maybe not with the exact timings, the exact longevity of colder and milder spells, but overall we got the general trend. It'd be very interesting to see if we get a if the similar trends come off this year as well. As I said, it could set up a very interesting start to 2024. All eyes now will be on that Copernicus data for next week. Because if that does back up what the ECMWF is showing, I think we'll potentially make some quite bold predictions next week. But this stage will stay, uh, we'll stay relatively quiet and wait for that data next week. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you have enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new. I'll see you again for another video soon.